Thank you both, uh, Savannah and Dr. Turner, for that deep dive both into your work at the Crisis Text Line, but also um, every day I learn a little bit more about what Discord is. I'm not a teenager anymore. Um, in fact, a number of you have pointed out a, some misinformation that I was spreading this morning when I mentioned that FOSI was launched in the year 2017, when in fact it was 2007, the year that changed everything, according to Tom Friedman. So when you get to my age, and I'm looking at you as well, uh, Michael Rich, um, the decades start to uh, fly by in ways that you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't realize. Um, so I've been asked to just kind of stand up here and uh, have a little chat with you all, uh, because we have a little bit of a, as you can see, rejigging. Um, oh, actually, one little reminder. We will be sending out um, an evaluation form electronically this year, not in paper form, because, you know, paper. Um, so that will be coming your way. Um, I've had some comments already. Why aren't there sessions on cyberbullying? Why don't we have more on that? This is be your place and opportunity to help us set the agenda for next year. So please do that. Um, oh, we're good to go. So. Next, we are going to hear from two content creators, a father and a daughter, about how they talk about online safety. And to moderate this session, I'd like to introduce to you Tracy Elizabeth. She is TikTok's, oh, round of applause, I heard. TikTok, yes? All right. She's, she's a rock star, she's a rock star. Um, she is uh, TikTok's newest head of family and safety and developmental health. Uh, she oversees minor safety, harassment and bullying, content classification and applied research teams to ensure TikTok's policies are designed to keep youth safe and to catalog content based on age appropriateness, which links back to the research earlier here. So please join me in welcoming Tracy Elizabeth. Whoop. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I tell you what, I'm a little nervous, and that's actually not normal to my character, and I think it's because I care so much about what we're talking about today. I care so much about you and your opinions, and um, I'm super excited. So, sorry, Stephen, I gave him a super long title. I do have like a really big remit at TikTok. I am nervous, so I'm gonna read my own title to you myself. I am the head of family safety and developmental health at TikTok. It is a great privilege. Um, before I do introduce our super special guest, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, why I'm here today, how I got to where I am today, and why it's so important to me. Um, so I started my career as an elementary school teacher in rural South Carolina. Uh, I taught third, fourth, and fifth grade reading. And what I would do for the kids is I would give them like a movie party after they finished a really difficult text. Um, and what I saw through watching these movies and reading the text is that there were all sorts of learning opportunities from those cross media, right? So I figured out like, wow, they're learning about perspective taking, social emotional awareness, literacy skills, plot, structure, author's purpose, all sorts of really interesting facts. And so I started to become really curious about like what else could media be leveraged for in order to promote healthy well-being in kids and teens? So I went to Harvard Graduate School of Education. I cannot believe that they accepted me. I can't, like I really to this day, I'm like, oh gosh. I think it was the wrong Tracy, but thank you so much and I'll just do the best I can. Um, but I studied prevention science first and prevention science thinks about what are risk outcomes I don't know if the mic is shaking because I'm shaky or if it's like just shaking because it's so excited. Um, but anyway, prevention science. So what are risk outcomes in youth? Dropping out of school, experimenting with drugs, unhealthy relationships, all these things that we think about that worry us about kids and teens, those are risk factors, right? And there's things in our, in our kids, in our teens' lives that are risky. But the great news is, is that research shows that there's also protection and prevention factors. So there's all sorts of evidence-based um, practices and approaches that we can apply that then mitigate, predict, prevent, 
that kind of risk. I went back to Harvard, got my doctorate. I think they knew who I was at that time around, but um, got my doctorate and specifically studied uh, teenagers. So I like to say I'm an expert on teenagers, even though sometimes I really wonder, because when I talk to them, I'm like, oh goodness, I'm learning a ton here. Um, but anyway, got my doctorate in adolescent development and media. Continued to consider how we can leverage media to promote healthy wellness and academic properties in kids and teens. And one thing that, when we think about risk and prevention, uh, one incredibly important protection factor is like a safe, trusted, healthy adult in a teen's life. So just having one person who that teen can reach out to and say, hey, I just want to talk to you, or this is going on. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be something that's bad. It can be something exciting, happy, you know, something they're curious about. But having that one trusted adult, family member, parent, that can make all the difference in the world when it comes to helping our, our teens, our kids, our teens, grow into healthy, happy adults. Um, so I'm just skipping right through my notes which I took on the hotel notepad. So thank you, hotel, for the notepad, because that's the, the fancy technology I've got today. Um, but in addition to that important adult, family member, caregiver in a teen's life, they also, what's really important and powerful is then having conversations. There is so much to a conversation that can really help enrich teens, and families, lives, relationships, understanding of their digital spaces and experiences, but also their real life experiences. Um, and so I think that we talk a lot about how important it is to have these conversations. I'm gonna try not to meander, because I'll start moving around the stage and then forget what I'm talking about, sorry. Um, but but we, we, we act like it's so easy to have the conversation. It's not easy, and families are really different. And, and the relationships that you might have with one of your teens or one of your kids could be completely different than what you have with another. And so I think that what we need to start talking more about are what are the tools? What are the strategies? How can we open those conversations and make them effective? And that's what we want to talk about today. Um, so yes, those conversations are key. No, they're not easy. All families are different, but there are strategies. And I think with a little effort, try this way, that way, or another, what you'll realize is that you can bond with your family, you can get to know each other, and you can get to good places. Um, so today, I'm gonna introduce Drew and Billy Perry in just a moment. And I'm so excited about Drew and Billy because they are a father-daughter duo who both independently create and have their own social like media presence, online presence, um, and they also, model in a really beautiful way how families can have conversations. Difficult conversations and exciting, fun conversations. They didn't start my clock. I still have 30 minutes. It's just gonna keep going. Um, but before we have Drew and Billy come out, I'm gonna play a quick sizzle to just give y'all a taste of the type of content that they produce that's been enjoyed by millions across the world. Ooh, that's a good question. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to say yes, and I'm not going to say no, but here's what we're going to do. I'll call his parents up, invite them over, shoot the final for us tonight. We'll watch the games, we'll have dinner, I'll talk about the vacation, and then we'll make a decision from there. That fair? Yes, sir, thank you. You're welcome, love you. Love you. Love you. Have love a great you. day. You too, see you after school. All right, see you after school then. Bye. Bye-bye. Did something seem off to you with her yeah, this morning? She, she didn't seem right. She seemed kind of sad. That's what I thought. I'm going to give her a call real quick. Hey. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Hey, why don't you, I can't help but say, come on back home a little bit. Let's regroup. Hang out. A little mental health day. A good day. I'll be home in just a second. All right. Love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Parents, sometimes when your kids are struggling, they don't say anything at all. Hear what they're not saying. Sometimes they need you to notice them. Do better. Thank you. Okay, and with that, please come on out, Drew and Billy. Drew and Billy Perry, y'all. Wow. I love also that you say, like, love you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Love you. Isn't that sweet? It's cool. 
Um, it's real. It's real. Yeah, it's real. Yes. That's what makes it flow, I think. No, just... yeah, my friends are like, how many times do you guys say love you before you hang up the phone? <laughs> I love that so much. I try to tell my daughter about 100 times a day that I love her, and she's like, I know. <laughs> hey, at least she knows. She knows. <laughs> exactly. That, yes. Exactly. Um, well, I thought it might be nice just to kick it off to welcome you all to just like explain, explain to everybody, like, who are you? What are you all about? You know, like, to introduce yourselves. Well, we are... The Perrys from Oklahoma. Uh, got my wife and other daughter sitting over there, um, and uh, we're just we're just a family that I guess cares and kind of fell into the let's share our family life. Um, yeah, I mean, we have such a close relationship. Like, I'm so blessed to have them as my family. Like, my sister's my best friend. My brother, he's in college, but I talk to him every single day. My parents, like, I feel so, like, comfortable talking to them, which is, I know I'm lucky to have that. I'm sure that they're very week. happy to hear you say that, too. Um, tell us about, like, how did you get your start? How did you get your start on TikTok? All right, well. I mean, I've had, like, TikTok as long as I can remember. Like, whenever it was musically, I had it. I remember the day that it changed to TikTok, they had a huge announcement and then it changed to TikTok. And then, well, one day on Musical.ly, I remember having him do a little video with me. I would just like put him in it. He had my dog and he was like holding her. He was doing a little dance. Yeah, he was doing a little dance with me. And then occasionally he would do some little dances. Oh, what was that one? One time we made a TikTok to the, go and do the two-step. The two-step, yeah. yep, yep. That dance, he did that. It took him so long. He couldn't do so it in normal. So long to remember he that He couldn't dance. ever do it in normal speed. We had to do it in the slow-mo one. Had to time up and yeah. yeah, do the two time, three times. So that way it looked a little better. So. Yeah, so we'd always put him in our videos and then. Use the edits. Forever he, <laughs> yeah. the, or what do you mean, the, the, As yes. long as I can remember also, he's always done trick shots. Like I remember one day I had like a show and tell in like first grade and I showed him never he juggled fireballs and kicked the football. <laughs> And he would always just like post them on Facebook and stuff just for like his friends, just because that's just like his hobby. And then one day I was like, well, you should like post it on TikTok so you can continue. I, I said, TikTok? I didn't even know what TikTok was. Um, so she said, well, I'll make an account. So she made an account. She climbed up on the roof, got the camera. I kicked a football over the house, into our pool, into this little, you know, thing in the back. And... Um, all of a sudden, it was a Sunday afternoon. I look down, my phone is going crazy. I'm like, what is this? He calls me downstairs, and I still remember this to this day. And he's like, it has like, I, probably like 5,000 likes, maybe even 1,000. Yeah. And we were like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, you're lying. You're on the For You page. If like, you're My exact words were For You what? <laughs> no clue. So. And I was like, no, like, that's insane, because none of my videos, like, probably ever got more than 20 likes. So, and after that video, we were like, okay, yeah. this is cool. This is something. And, you know, those two over there came up with the next idea of okay. dressing yeah. me like a Visco girl. Um, they turned me into Visco dad. Since that video, our yeah. lives have never, yeah. that, that changed then, everything. He's been Billy Visco. And that is how Billy Visco, yes. I did not give myself that name. It was from the followers at that point in time on that video. Oh, Billy Visco, Daddy Visco, Dad Visco. You know, it was just yeah. all the Visco stuff. And so, right. and, and then the comments were, you know, I wish my dad would do stuff like that with me. And, you know, yeah. I wish he would, I couldn't ask my dad. I mean, the comments were just broke my heart. I'm like, how do you not do this stuff? So right then and there, it was like, okay, this is, this is needed content right now. Yeah. And then from then on... It's just, We've shown it just our life. There, We've yeah. welcomed everyone to our yeah, lives. To your yeah. family. Yes. So, okay, so we've met a couple of times now, which I'm so grateful to get the opportunity to get to know you. I had never heard before, so you introduced him to TikTok and had yes. to teach him how to use the platform. Okay. It, was, it probably took a while before he knew how to work at, like... Every single time I'm like, here, here you go. He's but there's like, a yeah. lesson in that, you guys, so that, that'll come into play here in a little bit, yeah. yeah. Well, you touched a little bit on this, but I am so curious to know, like, how do you get these ideas for what you're going to create? And then also, you probably have conversations and think about your family brand identity or your individual identities. Like, how do you, how do you talk about that? And how did you come to yeah. your creative identities? We, we definitely, we have a family group chat that fills up really, really quickly um, because, you know, they'll get ideas. We'll get ideas. We have a son at college, too. He'll get an idea, you know. 
Um, so that space, yeah, just random. Space, yeah, just random. If I'm you like, saw what does that, that mean? And he's like, video. And I'm just like, got it. If you saw that text thread, yeah, you'd be like, what in the world is this gibberish here? Yeah. And so those are kind of how the ideas are yeah. born. And like, I would say since he has had TikTok, he's also grown as a parent. Like, he's learned new things. Like, I've learned a new lot. things. Our family's grown. Yeah. And so, like, obviously, we're not perfect. So some of our videos, they came from, like, personal experiences with us where we've learned, like, how we can, like, do better. And so then yeah. those can make for a good video because, like, yeah. other parents probably need to hear it. So, And where did the do of... better come from? Okay, so. It used to be bring it in. He used to go. I used oh, to do sorry, bring guys. it in. Yeah. And it, well, funny story behind that real quick, because I know we're on a limited time. But yes, uh, one of the videos was showing um, my, it was talking about, now Darian has not, he's not a dad or anything by any means, but it was showing, hey, if your son did get a girl pregnant, how do you address that situation? Um, we addressed it at the end. I did this awkward air hug is what we called it. And it was like, oh my gosh. It was really it? bad. It was, it was so bad. Was horror. I was like, like, that can't ever happen again, because that yeah. looked really, you know. But anyway, so it became bring it in. And he has a tattooed on him, too. I do. I do. Which Bring is it crazy in. because we don't even say that really anymore. We just say do better. Know, now but that used to be, like, the top thing. That was what everyone said. But now everyone's like, oh, do better. And he, it's, he can get another tattoo. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, got, it's, it's got, to, got to go down for sure. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it, it's one of those, I think, being open-minded through this whole thing of, of list. You know, she loved the, the doing the videos and the dances and... Being a dad, I think that was an important yeah. to... It's like yeah. also like bonding. I mean, like, without this, I feel like... I mean, we obviously spend time together, but this, like, brings us all together more. I can't dance, yeah. but I wanted... She asked yeah. me to dance, so I wanted to dance. You know, I wanted to do it, so it's one of those. Yes. I'm completely heartwarmed. I don't know if, about y'all, but I'm completely heartwarmed, even with their dynamic. Like, it's obvious that you do have a pretty trusting relationship. And Absolutely. I know that there's families out there who are wondering, how, how can I also have a trusting relationship with my, with my teen? I want to talk about online safety. And I'm wondering, like, what conversations do you all have or had you had about online safety? Like, how did you approach talking about that? First of all, I think um, any communication goes way, way back to when they were, they were super small. We've been able to talk about the hard subjects and the tough things. Even, even at a very young age, we've, we've tried to make us very approachable. Mm -hmm. um, I don't ever want to. I mean, they have, you know, their, their thing to me sometimes is, are you mad? I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, they, yeah. but they can ask me that point blank. Are you mad? And I'm like, no, I'm not mad at all, but or so, sad, like, or sad, yeah. or, you know, they can, we, we feel the emotions, but it all goes back to, we're able to come to each other, yeah. you know, and, and talk about these things. And I think that's being open-minded and yeah. listening as parents, listening is, is way more important than talking as a parent a lot of times. And I think that's, what's really helped our bond um, and, and for me to grow as a parent is to realize I, I need to be open-minded. I need to apologize to her. I need to, you know, I've, I've learned these things as we've grown um, just over the last several years. Um, right. Yeah. I would say our connection is like way better. We both like are way more open and I mean, even though we've always been open, but even more now and with online safety, yeah. Like, with being on social media, like, you're going to meet people and you're going to have, like, relationships with people through social media. And, like, I mean, I've had a boyfriend that I met on social media. Like, I've had a lot of friends that I've met on social media. So it's hard to, like, you have to know the balance of, like, trust because someone can be so fake and you might not even know them. Like, you don't know who they are. So it's hard to know the balance. But, like, also having that connection with my parents, like, I can talk to them about it and they can, like, help me know, like, don't give out, like, this information, like, be careful, like, get to know them. Did, did you have a conversation with them, like, about the, like, the boyfriend that you'd met? Did you approach her parents? Yes, I did. How, did you mind? Like, would you explain a little bit? How did, how um, did you approach that? So I just had been, like, I don't even know. I was, like, yeah, like, I just kind of think I like him because it's weird, yeah. but, like, I FaceTimed him all the time, and I didn't know what they would think because I was, like, but like, that is a big thing we've learned. You, yeah. you did bring up a good point. FaceTime these people. You know, that's, that's another yeah. thing that we've taught. You know, that, I because mean, it's hard. You still might not know them. You, even right, with, right. Like, even in certain right. situations, like, I FaceTimed people and thought I knew them and I didn't know them. That's a whole other story. But, yeah. like, 
that could be in real life too. I mean, anyone can be fake, but FaceTiming, yes, that way you know they're a real person. Get to know them before you exchange like any information. And like whenever I met him, like he came to me, <clears throat> me, my dad, and my brother first, and like we all were together before. I just hung out with him to make sure it's like safe, you know. And I felt always open enough to tell them about our relationship, and they didn't like say like that's weird, like no. Well, I do think like, what you're describing here is definitely something, like the relationship that you all have, the way you talk about this, yeah. is what's supported by research. And what we know is that when, when we talk to teens, right, what teens will say is, like, first of all, please, like, I'd like to be able to talk to you, but don't freak out, right? Like, so step one, don't panic, don't freak out. And so having that safe right. psychological space where you're able to go to yeah. a parent or two, and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. Yeah. I think that's something that other families, like definitely as much as you can, even if on the inside you're feeling nervous or worried, try to just be that, like lean into your supportive side that's curious, yeah, right? Yeah, because they were always supportive and they helped me like know how to keep it safe, but they were also happy for me because I was happy and they just, like, they want what's best for me. So they just want to make there, sure it's safe and that I'm happy. There is a true statement. Yeah. Overly strict parents will create sneakier kids. And I, I promise you, uh, honey, you can take that to the bank. Yeah. Um, That's that 100%. Doesn't, sure. That doesn't yeah. mean... You, Coming from a teen, yeah. Yes. I mean, it, you know, it, and it's kind of like the, you know, when you say no, and it's just a no, yeah. you don't give any reasons. It's not... Eric, I don't care who you are. Even adults, you... I'm gonna do it now, anyways, just because you told me. You know, like I mean, if you say no to healthy. them going out and all the time, like you never let them do anything, and you think they're just going to their friend's house, like they're definitely leaving their phone in their mailbox and going somewhere else. Even if you it think, happens. like they're not, I can tell you, coming from a team, that they are. Yep. Well, ever, one thing I'll, I'll I also, know, yeah, oh, I just want to say that there's yeah, a balance. Okay. I'm not saying that your parents have to say yes to everything. No. I'm not saying that. At all. Healthy I'm just knows. Saying, there, yeah. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of videos. Yeah. I say, I mean, because most parents will, if you say no, because I, why? why? Yeah. Because I said so. That's, saying, you have to talk you to You don't want to just keep them in the house all the time and not let them ever do anything. I know, like, punishments, groundings, all that, normal, good. Saying no is good, normal. Just have a reason and yeah. let them still do stuff. Let them be a kid and have fun at the same time mm -hmm. while being safe. I studied social development and my academic advisor, um, he would always say like knowing is half the battle. I think he even helped write like the PSA for G.I. Joe, but we would talk a lot about like perspective taking social development and he would always just say like you've got to lean in with a reason, right? Like yeah. that reason is so powerful and if you're going to give your, your kids or teens a message that they don't feel so excited about, at least you've also given the context of, and this is why. And when that why leads to things about like keeping you safe, we love you, even though we want to get to know you and bond with you, it's also our responsibility as advocates for you as our child to, to, to lean into when we need like, you to, to know that there, there's like a, a firm line. Um, my daughter turned seven a few days ago. I tried not to cry all day because I really just wanted to stay like six forever. But anyway, she is definitely at a stage in her life where she thinks I should just say yes to everything. So we're discussing that. Um, what, I, what I also noticed- We call it healthy nose. Healthy nose. Oh, healthy nose. Yeah, say more. Say, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Like, because if you just say no, like- this, that doesn't fly. Just give a reason why. And not kids are because curious. I said so. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I said so is not a reason. If they give you reasons, that, does that make you feel a little bit more like, okay. Yes. I but mean, even, your kid might still be upset sometimes, but as a kid, you should still understand. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. My parents, I mean, he lets me do stuff that's safe. He lets me do like a reasonable amount of stuff, mostly like whatever I want to do that's in reasonable range. But and if, even if they do say no, like they give me a reason. I'm still gonna be upset, but I understand it, you know. Yeah. You but that's understand. not gonna prevent her to come and talk to me. Yeah. It, no. You know the way you tell them. Because he gives me a no, reason. Yeah. You're, you're, then your kids may not ever. He explains you know. it, and usually there's a compromise. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, so there's a compromise. A compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, like if I couldn't go do something, cause say maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe it's like dangerous or really far or something like, but you can do this. Okay. Yeah. Oh, something see. like that. But also, Billy, so you have three kids, and I'm wondering, yes. do you ever modify your approach 
depending on, because I know one size doesn't fit all, right? Probably even within the family. How, if at all, do you approach that one is a child? Great, that's a great question, but we do have a, a saying in our family, and that's what we do for one, we do for all. Um, no, I try to break that stigma, huh? Because like, I have approached for you different to approach to her. Oh, yes, yes, now they do, I'm sure. Like, I'll, after you, I'll explain. But, okay. Um, but no, uh, I, you know, because we do have a son in college. Uh, he's 19. Drew will be almost 18. Uh, she'll be 18 in February. Kenna's 14. So, I mean, they're, they're all similar. So, yes, if, you know, if Darian got to do something that I don't no, think there's... No, but approach. Like, I feel like you'd approach me different than Darian. Like, I'm more emotional. Like, you have to be careful what you say to me. Like... Oh, I could say, no, boy, you know, or something, you know, I guess, come on, man. He maybe says that to me and I might cry, yes. so. Yes, <laughs> He's going to have to be like, not this time, but Darren, he's like, no, boy, like, as a joke. Oh, he doesn't talk to Darren no, like that. No, 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 he, no. No, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm an emotional person. You can't come to me the same way you can come to Darian. Yes. So, what we, how we explain it, you are exactly right. There are yeah. little different, you know. Approaches to each of us. Approaches and to like, each one And, like, for him, them. like, an example, I know... When to approach it and when to not. Like, there's times of the day where I shun it. For example, right after he gets done working out, he's out of breath. If I need to come to him about something, it's just not right after he works out. Cause okay. It's not because yeah, I'm in yeah. a bad it's mood not or anything. A bad mood, it's just like, you yeah. just have to know. Like, yeah. We both have been in situations, I remember not that long ago, something like important happened. And we just like we could both tell it wasn't the right time for us to talk. So yeah. we just kind of ended it and it wasn't like... It was like, eh, We're just like, like hey, we didn't take finish time it. Out. So then he texted me because like I wasn't there. I was like going somewhere. He texted me. He's like, hey, like let's finish this conversation later. Like we both kind of weren't in the right like you mindset. Know, I don't yeah. know. It just wasn't the right time for either of us. So then we were like, we she agreed. was frustrated. Like, I was frustrated. Yeah. So I we think, both and you were can... like, yeah, like let's come and talk about this again later. Yeah. Whenever we're both like, we get ourselves together too because. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. Yeah, and I think, I think the strategies that you're taking are even supported by like science, psychology. Like, there's definitely things that you're you're like doing that probably work well for others. Um, we think a lot about when trying to encourage families to have conversations. Is like, sure, try, and if it's not a good time, that's okay. Don't be discouraged. Try again later. So I think it's completely valid to just be like, you know, I care. Or you can kind of, like, kind yeah. of say, like, sure, whatever, but I don't want to talk about it now. And then I think as long as we respect yeah. that it's not now, but later we are going to talk about this, that's probably... And follow up on those laters, because those yeah. laters can turn yeah. into nevers, and then, it, and then you lose it. You yeah. lose it. You Doesn't have do to that. stay... Because, you know, you don't want to end it where you're both, like, frustrated and mad. You just yeah. go in your rooms and, like, just shut down, you know? Like, you want to end it on a good note, like, yeah, always. Like, I feel like anytime we have a conversation, even if it's hard... Like, no matter what it is, I feel like we always come to, like, at the end, we're always like, I love you. Like, I feel like it's it always, always ends in a hug. It always, a hug. it always ends with a hug. It's, like, oh, always, yay. like, a happy ending, I feel yeah. like. Always. See? And there that goes Which that helps, like, me safety. be more yeah. open to coming to him about stuff, because I don't, like, so that, even if mm -hmm. I did something yep. wrong or something and I need to come talk to them about it, mm -hmm. like, even if I'm in trouble, like, they assure me, like, we still love yeah, you. Like, that wasn't there smart. Is it. What yeah, do we always there say? There might be a consequence, there but is. we love you, and you're, can, you're gonna make mistakes. There we is nothing we, we yeah. can't get through. get through. He says nothing. that all the time. That's there like is his nothing thing. we can't get yeah. through. You can come to me, yeah. and, and I have proven that on many occasions. Yes, there is he nothing. Has. I think that is awesome. Yeah. All right, so y'all, just as we anticipated, time is flying, and there's still so many things I was hoping to get through. So I'm gonna try to like quick through quick two through. different topics. Yeah. Yeah. And one is, like we think a lot about digital citizenship, right? So we have all these conversations about online safety, which is incredibly important. And we tend to, I believe, hyper-focus on how can I keep my child safe, my teen safe. But there's this other element that is how, what is my child or teen putting out there that's gonna help make sure that that community is friendly, kind, loving, you know, uplifting. And so what kind of conversations do y'all have about your own online presence and digital citizenship, being kind, a good, you know, digital neighbor. We've had that conversation many times. Yeah. First of all, we, you know, they've been brought up to be kind and, and you know, respectful. And, but we've, we've had that. I mean, how, yeah. we, I want them to feel, you know, when they put out, I want them to feel, you know, good about what they're putting yeah, out yeah. in the world because they know it's going to come back in one way right. or another, whatever you're putting and out. Like, I know there's younger, like, there's like 13-year-old girls, like 
14, just a little younger people watching me. And so I want to, like, whenever I know that they're watching me, you know, like, I want to be a good example to them. Yeah. And, like, I don't want to put something out there that, like, maybe, like, their mom would have to be, like, don't watch that or, like, anything like that. Like, I yeah. want them to be someone, I want to be someone that, like, they're, like, oh, like, like, not look, I don't want to say I want them to look up to me. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, I want to be a good yeah, you want to set example. A good example. Set a good yeah, example. Set a good yeah. example. And Put then it, yeah. I used to get, like, negative comments a lot on my dad's videos. And it does hurt. And I feel like one way for, like, online, like, if that happens to you, because it's, people are like, oh, that just comes with being on social media. It does. But you don't have to feel ashamed to, like, turn your comments where only your friends can comment on it. Because, like, they do hurt. Words hurt. Like, yeah, and it's important to be mindful yeah. of that because and we want these online spaces yeah. where people can and express their identities. And you want best for yourself, and yes. reading those is not. So yeah. just, like, don't be scared to turn it to, like, friends-only comments or do what you can do to protect yes. yourself. Thank you. Okay, y'all, so a couple things that are really important. Definitely, like, as a mom myself, I keep hitting my microphone. Um, I use all the apps my child uses. I play Roblox. I've learned to play Minecraft. I do it because it is the right thing to do for her. So one thing that I always encourage families to do, which it sounds like Billy does, is, like, use the apps that your teens use. Get to know the rules use the tools, right? Talk to each other about it, do that stuff. And I think the more that caring, loving adults can be immersed in the media that their families are also immersed in, not only can you feel more confident about the online safety concerns, but also there's really beautiful ways to bond, get yes. to know each other. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so with that, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering, my South Carolina wondering. There it is. super, super, girl is going to come out. What advice would y'all give to families who are also trying to have healthy conversations about digital spaces? What advice do you have? You hit the nail on the head when you said, get the apps. Join in on the apps. Know the apps. You know, don't be the parent that had no idea that your kid got a YouTube. You know, I get that a lot. I didn't even know my kid had this stuff. And so that's part of being involved. It goes back to being involved. But get these apps. No, there's so many safety features. TikTok has came up with so many cool features and it Family allows parent. you, it allows you guys to, that's other things you can communicate about and show each other. Hey, did y'all see this? Yes. This is cool. And, and yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's huge to just, to just be a part of it, be engaged because your teens, they love social media right now. They love it. Yeah. Be involved, be with them. And then I would say for teens or anyone, if your parents are trying to be involved, Sometimes you might think like, oh, that's embarrassing. Like my mom has Snapchat. But they're trying, so like let them. Interact with them. If they're trying to be open with you, be open with them. And if they want to connect with you, connect with them. Because you're, like if you don't, you're going to regret it one day. Like it's fun. You can make it fun. It's not embarrassing. Like yes, it's Yay. fun. So don't be embarrassed if your parents yeah. want to connect with you. So be level. open, connect, have fun. Yes. That's right. All right, y'all. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say, people love watching, you know, families interact and see how other families interact um, yeah. on yeah. social media. Don't be scared yeah. to put your family. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fun place. Or bond. To like, enjoy yeah. together. Enjoy and together. And you meet people yeah. and you see, you know, it, it's not a, it's not, it can be, but it's not a scary place. It's no. A, you yeah. Know. It's a fun place. Yeah. Okay. So the red timer is blinking angrily at us and Stephen mm -hmm. is over in the corner like this. Make an eye contact big yeah. time. Oh, he's like, no, I'm not. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much. Please help thank me applaud Drew and Billy Perry. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.